Hey everyone, this is Chris McDonald, and I also have Amanda, Dave, and Matt. Um, and we're here to chat with you about the MyLaps hardware integration with race day scoring. So uh, hopefully a number of you were able to join us uh, last week. Is it only last week? It feels like longer than that. But uh, for race day scoring training with Matt. And um, hopefully you've had some time to play around with that. Um, so today we're going to be specifically talking about how to set up streams and timing locations with your uh, MyLabs hardware. And so with that being said, I'm going to, we have a couple slides and then um, our friends from race day events, who are Amanda and David, are going to be um, walking us through as they are um, big time users of MyLabs and then also uh, they are um, big users of race day scoring. So um, yeah, with that being said, I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna turn my uh, camera off so I can focus. For some reason I can't focus when I can see myself. And let's see. All right. So I always like showing these because we finally have some cool graphics. So this is, uh, I think, uh, the second or third step in the um, Run Sign Up MyLaps uh, Timer Certification Series. And so our friends at Race Day, um, Race Day events is based out of Madison, Wisconsin. They put on 300 events a year. Um, Amanda has been doing this for quite some time. Um, and I think uh, she's, she's not only a great timer, but she also uh, qualified for Ironman World Championships, I believe. I, she'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure that happened like a year or so ago. So, um, And then Dave's the senior timing project manager at Race Day, and um, he's big on the computer side as well, um, but has been with them for the past uh, two years. And so with that being said, I'm not gonna bore you with any other background and I'm going to go into, uh, I'm gonna change presenter mode over to Amanda and um, she's gonna walk you through some timing and scoring and race day scoring um, settings for how to set up. So I'm gonna pass over to Amanda. All right. We all good on? Seeing race day score in there? Yep, we can see it. Oh, right. before you get going, let me just say really quickly for those of you that aren't used to GoToWebinar, if you have any um, questions or comments or anything, um, you have a panel on the right hand side of your screen and you can click on the questions tab. Um, and so uh, we already have a couple people jumping in, and uh, the, the MyLaps team is on the back end as well saying, uh, Hi, uh, hi, race day events. <laughs> so, hey, Dan. <Hi. laughs> and with that being said, I'll let you guys uh, get to doing the demo. Sweet. Uh, first, thank you guys for having us on. This is exciting to be able to uh, demo this semi live. Uh, we had a grand plan to do like a whole finish line and make our staff run through the finish line. And then I realized that uh, Chris has all of our decoders out at uh, the Berkey cross country skiing race. So we're gonna be working off of uh, some old data that we have just from some past races. Um, so uh, you guys are probably all familiar with this main home screen here. Um, the first thing we go in and do is uh, just start collecting our reads. Uh, for me personally, if I don't go in and do this right away, at, at some point I probably end up forgetting. And uh, then, you know, when you start the race, you realize nothing is coming in. Um, and then going from there, we'll click down to streams. We'll kind of ignore all of this participant data stuff for today. Uh, today, we are going to go over the two different ways that you can pull data in from uh, timing and scoring. Um, so the first being a uh, user-defined file, uh, and the second being a TCP IP, uh, just a MyLaps direct file. Uh, so I'll go in just kind of to these settings here just to show you what this stuff looks like. Um, so everything going through here, we've named, we're going to have a, a start and a finish uh, so two separate locations. Um, 
name the start file. Uh, your stream type for pulling from a file is going to be MyLapse Read Light. Um, so each of these will click through. Uh, the next and probably one of the most important steps here is to make sure you have the correct path where you plan to pull that data from. Um, if not, you won't see anything come in to race day scoring. Going back to our finish here. So the finish again is going to be our MyLapse Direct. Uh, very important that your timing and scoring location name in race day scoring and timing and scoring match. Um, fun fact, when uh, Matt and I sat down to do this, God, I think it was the first certification um, we were trying to go through a test race and couldn't figure out why the data wouldn't push through. Um, there was actually a space at the end of our timing and scoring file. Uh, so it is very, very, very important to make sure that is exactly the same. Um, so us for today, we're going through a, a bib tag. Uh, the next important thing to note here um, I'm not sure how many MyLapse event app users we have, uh, but Race Day Events uh, is a very big user of the event app. And the event app, the, the listen port is hard coded to 3097. Um, that being said, when you're using the event app and Race Day scoring simultaneously, this listen port for Race Day scoring will need to change. So you would need to change it in race day scoring and then also in timing and scoring. And I'll show you that when we get to the timing and scoring portion of this. Um, but that's just something to note that your data will not push through correctly if those ports um, aren't applied the correct way because the MyLapse event app is hard-coded, uh, whereas race day scoring is not. Thank you guys to the race day scoring team for doing that. Um, moving on next to our uh, timing locations. Um, all of this is you know, preset before the event. Uh, we just always like to, to have our staff come in and just double check all of these settings. Um, for, for race day events, uh, we do have around eight full-time timers, uh, so they're a little bit more experienced, uh, but we also have 12 weekend warriors um, who aren't working on this day in and day out. Um, so we've kind of trained them to make sure that they come through and they know what each of these things are doing and they're, we're on all of the correct settings. Um, so the important thing to note for this start file timing location is that it needs to stay start file, not direct. Same thing here, come in and look at, make sure that um, the type of reads that are coming in and then also that mainstream again. All right, so moving on to the timing and scoring side. Uh, like I said, we uh, our grand plan was to do this completely live. Uh, didn't work out. So we have just an old file here um, that we've kind of played with just to be able to uh, show everything that we wanted to show today. Um, so I will start with uh, the start files here, which as we've discussed, we're going to use a user define. So I'm going to add my exporter. go to my settings to make sure that I'm finding the correct folder that I do want to put this into. From here, we're going to go ahead and just replay that file. Again, in this case, we're replaying because it's an old file. Uh -oh. I'd connect that exporter. Right. 
saving into my correct file. Um, so the trick here is that we have these two folders. Um, one is the initial export, and the second is what we're actually pulling into race day scoring. Um, so all you need to do is uh, make sure it recognizes it changed. So we just throw this file into here, and I'll head back to race day scoring, go to our main screen. You see that we're already starting to get reads that'll filter in through here. So we just have nine people that were voluntarily going to run for us, but they get to stay in their offices. Uh, so just kind of one fun thing to note uh, for people that aren't huge race day scoring users, uh, one of the things that we absolutely love is this race statistics screen. Um, so race day scoring, in our opinion, has done an absolutely amazing job of making this. Uh, I know for us, the, the most common question from a race director is, how many people are left? Uh, you hear it all the time. And uh, previously, we were run score users. Um, and that is a report you could pull. Uh, but it's just not as clean. It's not as nice. Uh, and it's not right in your face. Uh, so this is definitely an added benefit of race day scoring. All right, so moving on to our finish. As I said, in this case, we use two separate uh, locations here. So we'll go ahead and bump this down to our finish location. Uh, and in here, we'll be using the TCP IP. Um, and as I had mentioned earlier, for uh, for those that may not know, uh, the settings is where you would come in and you would change that port um, if you are simultaneously using the event app for my labs. So we'll go ahead and just play our file here. Come back to race day scoring and we'll watch our people finish. Right. <clears throat> Again, and another couple really nice features uh, of race day scoring uh, for things that we personally use. Uh, we always manually take the top five males, top five females, uh, write them down. And so again, to have this, this gender leaderboard here, to be able to toggle back and forth between those males and females makes it really easy to kind of check uh, and make sure we have all the results correct. And then we'll go ahead, just go down and check out our overall reports. All right. I think that's about all we have in the way of timing scoring stuff. Chris, is there anything else you want me to touch on? Sure. I think we, we set up a, an error in here, um, didn't we? On the If you look on the right-hand side, um, you see the raw reads. Um, yes. And this is letting you know that data is coming in, and mm -hmm. Amanda clicked on the errors. Um, so red doesn't necessarily mean bad. It just means that reads that aren't being used for some reason or another. Um, but then she clicked on unknown bids. And so you have all of these people, and again, they're using they're using data from uh, from another event and don't have all these same people uh, listed into their event. But the beauty of the system is because it bidirectionally syncs, they can then click on one of these unknown uh, reads and they can assign it um, to a person. So if we know that, um, you know, a certain person I, who, I, I don't remember who the, you guys had in the event. Um, I think it actually may have been me. Yeah. 
Yep. So you see there's no bib number there. And so they can go in um, and assign it and save it. And um, and so it, it, will it will think yep. oh, through room sign up. And it, then it will also recalculate the, the times at that point. Yep. Yeah, yep. and, 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 and score your runner. Yep. So, and some other really nice features um, about this integration with MyLapse is when you're creating a file um, and doing a file export within MyLapse, um, it, it creates a file folder for you. And so once you create that export, you just need to point your, um, your stream at that folder that's created. So you only need to make one exporter for file and it will make you file folders for each specific um, location. So if you have five or six different splits, um, it'll make a file for each one, which I'm sure most of you MyLabs timers know. Uh, the only other thing I want to point out, especially for those that are new at this, um, if you go to streams um, on the left-hand side, if you're setting things up for the very, very first time, You'll want to start with going to that settings at the top, just beside the green button that says add stream. And Amanda's is already set up this way, but you can see she's already selected my labs. And so um, if you've been messing around with it, it might be blank. It might be, you know, set to some other system. Um, but just make sure if you're going to be timing the event with my labs equipment that it my labs is selected. And that um, again, this is where if you have to change the listen port, um, because you're using the, the event app, uh, MyLapse event app, this is where you would change it um, within race day scoring. And Amanda showed you as well where you would change it within timing scoring. Um, and so you can save those settings and uh, and that's the, everything's set up and ready to go. And the only other thing I would say, if we go into the start location here under streams and edit it, so if you're using the dropdown of a stream type and you don't see MyLapse relight file, um, if you if you select and said just set it to uh, select a stream type real quick. Yep. And then drop it down again. And I believe you have different options. So what you'll need to do at this point. So this is where you would have a starting point. You would go to file, custom or chip system type. And then the next one, it says file type. And you click that and the drop down gives you the MyLapse Relight file. So when you click it, both turn to MyLapse Relight file. So if for some reason you don't see stream type as MyLapse Relight file initially, it's because you have to set it to custom file and then the file type would be MyLapse Relight file. And then at that point you go through, you know, your folder path, file extension and system type. So are there any questions? There, there are a couple. There is one question there. Um, why would we ever use user-defined file instead of a TCP IP connection? Um, some of those options, if you don't have a, a modem connected to your MyLaps uh, BibTag decoder and you are taking intermittent connections, you know, connected to it directly and downloading a file uh, for later, to input that into a split or something like that nature would be one scenario. Uh, if you don't have that that modem with that that SIM card connected, would be a, uh, one reason why you might use it. The other would be is if you like for us, we take those files as backups and then clear to clear the decoders a few days after the event. If we need to verify a time or rerun it through, um, and we have another file that's corrupt. That would be another reason why you could use a user-defined file um, in order to run your reads through race day scoring. I completely agree, especially on that second one. If, if you're used to timing with TCP IP, I would always, just good practice to always have that backup file so you can go back and look at it. We have one question there. <clears throat> um, Asking if we also support, we, he sees that we see, he sees that we support uh, bib tag and pro chip. Do we also support championship? Um, and I believe that if you use the pro chip settings, championship will also work. Um, not too many users of that around anymore, but um, 
that shouldn't be a problem. You would just want to use the pro chip settings in your streams. Yep. And if you uh, obviously for for championship, you're going to need to drop in a bib chip file. Um, and so uh, this wasn't part of it. So I'll just get um, <laughs> you guys to drive around. But if we go to the participants tab on the left and under actions, we can uh, set chip auto assignment. And so this, uh, this middle part, the import chip assignments, this would be where we import the CSV um, for that uh, bib chip file. So you would just need to have it. And if you don't have a header, just make sure that little button, if you don't have you know, a, a header above that chip and bib that says chip and bib, um, then click the no header record. Otherwise, if you have that, um, if you don't have that selected, um, it'll skip over the uh, whatever your first chip is on that um, on that file. Amanda, can you quickly show about entering gun time? Good catch. Get our home screen here. Um, so underscored events. Uh, you'll roll through here. This will populate from run sign up, which is really nice. So that's the approximate start time. So it's pulling it straight from your registration page. Uh, and what's nice, and at least from the run score side, uh, is if you forget to set a gun time uh, or for whatever reason somebody misses a gun time, it, it will use it, uh, which is very different than what your run score will do. Um, but then what you're putting in here is uh, this is where that actual gun time will go. One other thing I want to talk about with the the folders for the files, do not use your desktop. Um, create a a folder specific for your files. If you choose to use your desktop, Race Day Scoring will start pulling random text files, and you'll see some pretty weird errors um, with that. So create a custom folder for your um, MyLabs files that you can um, save them to when you are using a user-defined file. Let's see. The group ID exists. Um, if you so, Christian's got another question about the group IDs. Um, and so, if you do not select that, it will assume that the group ID is zero. Um, if you're not, if you're not normally using uh, groups like ordering group IDs through MyLaps, you would probably leave that off. Um, but if you do have events where you've got a group ID of, of zero or one or something like that, because you're using the bib number, uh, two bib numbers in the same event, um, or at the same finish line, then yes, you would select that, and um, and it would acknowledge that those leading zeros, uh, that the first two digits are going to be group ID. There was one question about um, whether or not race day scoring can process and use marker reads from um, your actual hardware. Um, so I don't know if um, you guys at RDE use uh, the marker reads on your decoders at all? Uh, we usually do not. Yeah. So some timers do, some timers do not. <clears throat> um, but race day scoring does have a way to automatically import those. So in Timing and scoring, if you were to, many of you will know this, if you were to um, hit the marker on your um, actual decoders, it'll show up as a read in timing and scoring. Instead of a bib number, it'll have in all capitals, gunshot. So race day scoring does actually support those and can convert them to um, start times for events if you want to. So I'll do a quick, I'll try and do a quick demo with you, um, Amanda here. So. If you go to the um, timing locations on, on race day scoring, and on the right, there's a marker reads button. Just click one of them. It actually doesn't matter which one you do. 
Okay, so um, what we have on the right here is by default, race day scoring creates a, uh, a mapping to each event start, the 5K and the 10K run. Now, generally, if you were really wanting to use um, the marker read integration, what you'd wanna do is edit that second one, the 10K run. So click the little pencil icon and you'll see that there's the marker identifier is like basically, you know, what the read is labeled as, so gun time for markers, and then the occurrence. So we're gonna say the second time we see gunshot is gonna be the start time for the 10K. So for this one, we'll save it as um, 10K and occurrence two. All right, click add. So um, now if you did have some marker reads recorded in your streams for the start, they would show on the left, show the timestamp, show the occurrence, and say gunshot for marker. So it will automatically overwrite your existing start times for the events based on the timestamps from those marker reads. So you can have you know, as many occurrences of gun time as you want, and you just have to make sure that you set this up right if you know you accidentally hit the gunshot marker in between the 5k and the 10k start well your occurrence for the 10k start is actually going to be three so if you are using it you do have to keep in mind that you have to manage this a little bit cool are there any other questions another second just in case people are typing all right well um i'm gonna steal the um let's see if i can my messy desktop um so Following up this, uh, we have two more um, sessions for this series. Um, next week, we have, oh, it went away, that was weird. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you're on, you, I think you're on the wrong desktop. Yeah, we have, oh, that's good. Um, so, sorry about that. Um, so uh, upcoming webinars next week is My Laps and Publishing Race Day Results. So we'll go through the reporting and publishing of results. Um, and then the following week is the run sign up timer certification. This is a little bit different than um, actually, I think this is the first time we've ever done one of these. And it's specifically um, how to use run sign up as a whole um, for specifically designed for timers because there's a lot in run sign up. Um, I'm sure most of you have probably played around on the back end and just seen all the tools, tips, features, things like that. And it can be a little bit uh, overwhelming. Um, but this is going to be specifically dialed into timers and um, what you should probably know to be able to help your events succeed and also how to uh, how to do your job the best. Um, so that will be the following Tuesday um, from one to four. And then, um, yeah, at that point, we'll have wrapped up the uh, the race day certification for uh, my lapse timers. So are there any other questions? Um, can, yeah, can you throw, can you throw Amanda's um, back in presentation? We have a question about in progress to be able to see people in progress. Yep, there we go. She'll probably have to uh, show her screen. There it is. So as you see there in the middle of the screen, it'll say the in progress. If you actually click on that in progress, for the event, it'll list all the people who are there with bib numbers. Because we don't have anybody, Amanda, do you wanna click on yeah, in progress? You click on in progress, it would list all of your participants who are still in progress with their, with their bib numbers very similar to the finished one here. You can also- That's been, that's been very helpful for us, so. Yeah, you can also get to all that data from the reports. So if you click out and go to the reports tab, you'll see there's a progress reports section. 
So if you click that, this will give you a list of all of the potential different race statuses you have. So you can see all of the people who dropped out of the 10K or who have not started the 5K or whatever you want all available here. Well, um, we appreciate everybody joining us. And again, a huge thanks to uh, our friends at Race Day Events and uh, MyLaps. And um, yeah, if you guys have continued questions, feel free to reach out to either myself or Matt Avery. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions or go through any um, uh, specific training with you. Um, and yeah, if there are no other questions, then we will chat with you next Tuesday um, for the reporting um, review. All right. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Ernie. Thank you.